welcome back guys we have been going to so many weddings lately it's like every other week there's been another wedding and it kind of occurred to me like hey why don't I actually do a little tutorial on wedding guest makeup the goal is really you want to of course you want to look snatched but you also don't want to outshine the bride so we went to one last night and the colors were blue and white. I did a really simple eye makeup. I only used two ColourPop shadows and it went over so well. I got so many compliments on it. It it was just a really great feeling. So what I'm going to do today is recreate that look for you with just a little extra oomph, a little extra blending and let's go ahead and just jump right in. So I'm going to go ahead and start and prime my face with my Ole Henriksen Counterbalance Oil Control Hydrator. And I don't know about you guys, but when I do makeup for a wedding, either as a guest or even when I did my own makeup for my wedding, I want it to last the entire time. I don't want to think about it, and I don't want it to get super greasy looking or super oily. So what I like to do is start out with a super matte base and just kind of build on top of that. I have been using my most long wear products and last night I had my makeup on from probably about 2 o'clock in the afternoon till well past 10 and it was still gorgeous. So I think I finally found a mix of products that actually work. So first things first, I am going to use my Estee Lauder Double Wear. This is the only foundation that I have that I literally do not have to think about once I put it on. So we're using this one today. And I'm going to apply this with my new Morphe Stiletto Sponge. I've only been using this for a couple of days, but I love the shape of it and I love how bouncy it is. Even though it has a more flat bottom, it's not quite as round as a beauty blender. I, I'm just, I am loving this. I'm loving this even more than my Eco Tool sponge, and I never thought that would happen. As for concealer, there's only two that I really recommend for coverage that you don't have to think twice about. And the first one is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, and I like that for basically when my allergies are not out of control. But for like ultimate staying power when my eyes are running, my nose is running, my nose is red, <sighs> it is the Tarte Shade Tape. So this is pretty standard for me. You guys have seen this in a lot of videos where I actually do my makeup on camera. But I just go under my eyes, under my nose where it gets really red from my allergies, my chin. And I'm also going to use this to highlight a little bit right here on the forehead and down the nose a little bit. Before I powder my face, I'm going to go in with my Milani 2-in-1 Contour and Highlight Stick and just gently contour before I go in with my setting powder or my bronzer. Now that the cream contour is done, it's time to set our face, and I have really been enjoying the Too Faced Peach Perfect Setting Powder. It is a peach color, very rightfully so, and it kind of helps tone down any discrepancies on my skin, so if I went a little too hard on my concealer, you know, there's a very big color difference between my foundation and my concealer, or you know, just any little thing that I might have not done quite right, it helps bring it all together because it is a peach color. It says it's colorless, but it's not. But that's okay because I really like how it evens everything out on my skin. It kind of acts like a neutralizer, so I'm okay with it. Next up is bronzer, and you guys can probably tell by now that my face is super super matte and that's how I like it. I like to start out with a matte base and keep it as matte as possible and then at the end when I go in with highlighter and setting spray I can really go and get like the desired like dewiness level that I'm looking for. Most of the time 
I make enough glow on my own that I don't really need anything else but for now we're going super matte so I'm going in with my bronzer now this is the Urban Decay Naked Flesh Palette in Streak and I'm just gonna go in the same areas that I used my contour stick just a minute ago once the bronzer is done it's time to go in the blush and I kind of like to make more of a statement with my blush for special occasions than I do on the daily so I'm going into my Tarte Big Blush Book 2 and I think I'm gonna go into this one here called Quirky it's a little warmer a little more peachy than I would normally go for but I think with this look it'll be pretty bomb the wedding we went to yesterday the colors like I said were blue and white so this one has a really beautiful kind of blue shift and I thought it just went with the whole theme so well and I'm kind of copying that look so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one and I just love this because it goes from being kind of like this ivory highlight to this very pale blue when you shift your face around a bit it's just so gorgeous now that my highlight is popping I'm gonna move on to the brows Sometimes I like to do my brows before my eyeshadow, sometimes I do it after, but in this case, because I kind of want to know where my boundaries are, I'm going to do them beforehand. Now that my brows are done, this is my favorite part. These two shadows are going to make a huge impact, and I'm actually going to go in with one extra shade in a palette here in front of me, because I really want to... Just add a little extra depth and kind of blend out the edges a little bit better. But all you really need are two super shock shadows and you're all set. So the first shade that I'm using as my base shade is called Meow. And this is actually a mixture of like three or four different shades. It turns out kind of like a grayish blue on the lid, which is exactly what I wanted. And don't worry about being super precise at this point. Just get the color to your desired intensity on the lid. And then afterwards, we can always go ahead and blend out the edges with a nice matte shade. The second shade that I used is called Sailor. And you can really use whatever shade you want if you want to even use another one. All I did with this one was run it directly in the middle of the lid just to give it a little bit of extra oomph and catch a little more light. At this point, once you've used the two Super Shock shadows, you can be totally done. There's no need to continue if you like where it's at, but for me, because this base shade is kind of dark, I want to go back in and kind of just feather out the edges a little bit. So I'm going into my Zoeva on Taupe palette and I'm going to take this shade right here in the middle called Gallery, which is a really nice, cool, grayish brown shade, and just run this in the crease just to blend everything together. Once everything is all blended out, the last thing I did with my eyes was I used the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in Ultraviolet, and I just tight lined my upper lash line and about halfway in on my lower lash line and then smudged it out. And this is the finished look. So all I did was do two coats of mascara. I used my Makeup Geek highlighter on the brow bone and inner corner and I put on a cool toned gloss and that completed the entire look. Considering how big I like to go for special events, this was a very toned down look for me, but it just worked so well. I went and kept with the color scheme of the wedding and I ended up just getting so many compliments on it and from people I didn't even know. I didn't know most of the people there. I was just so surprised. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video 
and I really just wanted to share, you know, I normally go all out for special events, but you don't actually have to go full glam to feel glam. So that's just kind of what I wanted to share with you guys because I was just so surprised and you know in like a very pleasant way that th it got such a good reception and it wasn't even anything like really difficult to do. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite look for a special occasion is and if you do like these videos don't forget to give them a big thumbs up and like I've said in the last couple of videos, I am almost there. I was aiming for 100 subscribers by the end of the year, and I am currently at 95. So if you do like these videos, not only give them a thumbs up, but hit that subscribe button down below. I hope you guys are having an awesome week, and I will catch you in my next video. Bye, guys.